Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone who are joining us here according to your time zone. Welcome to this webinar on disability identification assessment and information management for social protection. Uh, we are glad to have you here as a part of the series of webinars uh, toward disability inclusive social protection uh, that is coming as a part uh, of advertising and launching the joint guidance toward disability inclusive social protection. Uh, in this part of the series, uh, we are going to discuss in deep about disability assessment, identification, and uh, information management for the social protection. And you can also uh, listen to the previous webinars in this series around disability um, extra cost, how to assess that, and also uh, uh, health social protection and assistive technology uh, along other uh, discussions that took place over the last two months. Uh, you can visit socialprotection.org or also you can find that on the YouTube uh, in where you can listen to the recording. Uh, before going further in this uh, conversation, I would like to highlight that we have uh, sign language interpretation in this webinar and we also have a captioning. So if you would like to, list, uh, to read the captioning through the uh, through the uh, Zoom uh, application or platform, you can uh, click on CC button. Uh, otherwise, you can also see the captioning in the external window as it has been posted in the chat. Uh, welcome once again uh, to this uh, webinar uh, in where we have uh, distinguished speakers uh, joining us today. Uh, we will have Alexandra Code, uh, Social Protection and Disability Social Policy uh, at UNICEF uh, uh, HQ. Uh, we will also be joined uh, by uh, Andre, uh, Andre from uh, World Bank, who is a senior social protection specialist. We will also have um, our colleague, Sheikh Rabbani, uh, IT and database expert from the social registry uh, in Mauritania. Uh, furthermore, we will have also colleague from uh, Armenia, uh, Maya Somonen, um, early childhood development specialist. And we will have also from UNICEF Romania, our colleague uh, Huba, uh, Huba, Huba Kamani, uh, social social policy specialist and last not least uh, we will have our colleague uh, Q uh, Q excuse me about the pronunciation uh, Q from UNICEF uh, Cambodia. Uh, in this uh, webinars, uh, we are aiming to listen and to learn and to get the lesson learned about the recent development in regard to the disability assessment, identification, certification, and information management that are taking place are at, at low and middle income countries. So we can see the recent, uh, the recent development and we can also listen and learn from the good practices and to see the highlight and the questions that remain unanswered so we can take this discussion further. We understand that this issue of disability assessment, uh, identification and certification is not an easy topic and it is always evolve, uh, evolving over the time and the, the discussion over it and the practical implementation of such system is also evolving. So it is a good timing to take, uh, to take this talk, to learn from different, uh, listen, uh, different experiences uh, and to see where we are, where we want to, to go, what the remaining challenge that we are having ahead of us. Uh, I would like to remind all of us that we can use a chat feature in order uh, to post any comment, uh, share link resources, and uh, discuss among each of us. And we can also use Q&A feature in order to post questions. There will be a chance by the end to respond to different questions. Please be precise uh, in your questions. And also if you are directing your question to specific speakers, it will be great to identify them in your, uh, in your question. 
Uh, without further ado, I would like to invite our colleague Alexandra Kord, uh, Social Protection and Disability Policy Specialist at UNICEF, to quickly provide us with the overall framework around disability assessment, uh, identification, and certification for social protection purposes. Alexandra, the uh, floor is yours. Thank you very much, Aladi. Um, I will share my screen in a second. Thank you very much, uh, colleagues. Uh, so as uh, Aladi mentioned, uh, this webinar is part of the series related to the launch of our joint guidance uh, towards inclusive social protection system enabling participation and inclusion of persons with disabilities, um, which include uh, a section on disability identification, assessment, and, and certification, which is the base of, of what we will share uh, today. So very briefly, inclusive social protection system should progressively provide universal basic income security, universal coverage of healthcare costs, including early intervention, rehabilitation, and assistive device, and coverage of disability-related costs Include, including access to gender responsive community care and support in ways that facilitate access to socioeconomic participation across the life cycle. In doing so, social protection system needs to mobilize a diversity of benefits, cash transfer, in-kind benefits such as concession or direct services um, for uh, childhood, working age and old age to fulfill those uh, different functions. They need also to create connection with other services, such as early childhood development, education, economic empowerment program, and more. And one of the key questions that government have and, and OPD's organization of persons with disabilities have is how do we decide who needs and who will get what? So we have a diversity of benefits for income security, for disability related costs connected to other services, uh, how do we decide uh, by which mechanism uh, who should get what? And this is where disability identification, uh, assessment and certification come into place. One of the questions that we wanted to um, bring at the beginning is the fact that there is often confusion between the number of people with disability or experiencing disability in a population and the number of people that would require disability specific social protection. If we think about social protection, every single person with disability, like anybody else in the population, needs social protection. Old age pension, uh, health insurance, um, unemployment benefit, maternity leave, et cetera. We know that because of vulnerability they face, they need more social protection. And they have those disability related costs that needs to be uh, tackled and covered. But this is not 15% of the population hmm, that we, we hear often because of the overall estimates of people experiencing disability globally. We are looking for people in need of disability specific uh, social protection support more between two to 6% of the population it could go beyond that for richer and older countries, but this is a little bit of a, of a target just to clarify at the beginning. One of the things that we learned from the COVID-19 crisis is the absolute importance of having inclusive social protection registries as well as disability registry that have good coverage because many governments have not been in position to actually reach uh, and support person with disability during the COVID-19 because they didn't know who they are, where they are, and what they need. And there are different mechanisms. Uh, the health system has data on person with disabilities and can identify individuals in need of certain kind of support. Social protection uh, management information system, social registry can do also. Disability registry, of course, can do that. And each have a role to play in ensuring uh, access to the different support that person with disability need. So with all the conversation we had uh, with you and, and with many colleagues, we have identified three main level of identification of person with disabilities for inclusive social protection. The first level, which is really at the level of national statistics. We are talking about census, labor force survey, household income and expenditure surveys, 
where we have question on disability. Why? To have an estimate of the share of the population experiencing disability and, and its diversity. Understanding the disability and equality gap and having a broad overview of some of the disability related cost and barriers. Those statistical data can help for policy planning, for advocacy. Then there is a second level, which we enter in the realm of administrative data, the social registry, social protection information system. And very often, this will help identify vulnerable households that are likely to have members with disability. And that will help to assess their specific socioeconomic situation, facilitate inclusive targeting of household benefits, and provide a space for referral for disability certification. And that often include disability related questions in social registry, routine survey and registration, but it can go until very light assessment. And finally, the third level, which is now referred often as disability management information system is basically the process by which government assess and certificate, certificate person with disabilities, adults and children who are in need of disability specific social support. And that is for disability targeting and eligibility determination, case management and policy planning. And that requires an ind individual disability assessment followed by a certification or a determination of disability based on official criteria. And today we will have example from different countries um, on the different option for social registry and how we combine that with disability management information system. And we will have experience both on the level of social registry and development of disability management information system. Uh, over. So I would invite Andre maybe to, to take over from here. Andre? Thank you so much, Alexandra. And uh, indeed, it is very interesting to listen to this overall uh, introduction about why we need disability assessment and why we need to have this certification. Uh, and I guess that's interesting. And one of the key message here is that we are taking this exercise of disability assessment and, uh, and, 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 and determination and certification uh, because uh, because we would like to identify specific persons with disabilities who will be targeted through uh, disability-specific social protection scheme. Uh, just here, not to confuse that persons with disabilities will be always eligible to enter other uh, general schemes or public schemes that are available for everyone without any discrimination and even without any uh, certification of disability. Uh, we need the certification only in case there is a specific targeted process towards persons with disabilities. Let us see how this process could be combined and, uh, and part of the social registry. And today we will have uh, Andre, uh, social uh, senior social uh, protection specialist also at the World Bank who can share with us a bit of experience and general um, overview about how the social registry could include disability registry as well. Uh, uh, could you take the floor please, uh, Andre? Thank you very much. Uh, could you see my, my presentation? I can say yes. Yes. Okay. So just I cannot put the video because the host uh, 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 stopped my video. So if host can, can allow me to, to put the video, I, 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 I will appear as well. Thank you very much, uh, Alex, for uh, for this uh, uh, a very good presentation. I would like to, on my presentation to to, to, to give some examples how the World Bank uh, is, is, is working on, on what Alexander calls how to render the uh, social registry more disability inclusive. As you know, World Bank intervened uh, in, 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 in most of the projects where we, we are working with the social registry and with the identification of the vulnerable population. And so we, we need to, to, to take more into account the, the, the needs of persons with disability. So if I start... Uh, here, uh, as, as, as Alexander mentioned, we have two big uh, 
different uh, data bulk and, and sometimes the, the people are, are confusing because when they start to 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 work with the um, with the, uh, the data coming from from the statistical assessment like population census assessment survey uh, when we speak about uh, 15 percent of population of, of uh, between two and six percent of population with severe disability uh, when the uh, the the we are starting to work on the social registry or uh, on, on the disability information system uh, the some government trying to reach this this number and it's very difficult to to compare actually the statistical assessment and uh, administrative records they will never match but but they they can give some complementary information so this is why we are uh, we are uh, trying as a world bank to to work on both on 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 uh, on, on social registry where we we have um, a, a household level uh, information and uh, 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 try to identify the person with pot who is uh, with potential disability and we, we support some country in in building the disability re registry with the uh, uh, individual uh, uh, assessment tools uh, uh, as, as we said the, the, uh, the social registry is often based on on the, on the household level uh, and uh, often uh, the, the, the the social registry are using the self identification uh, questions like uh, do you have the person with disability inside of the household and this is not very convenient because sometimes the household the household member themselves don't want to identify the person with disability inside or sometimes the the person who collect the information for the social registry uh, uh, they they can port their own judgment whether or not the there is a person with disability inside of the household and sometimes the disability can exist and can be invisible so in the, in this regard, we we know that uh, uh, different tools exist for, for for identifying the disability, both on, on on the on the statistical level, on the census and survey, and in on individual assessment. So we 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 are work, we, we start to work mainly with the with the Washington Group short short set of questions. Why? Because because well, uh, on most of the country now trying to to use this uh, this tool because uh, for 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 the for the national statistics. Uh, uh, and I will give the example of, of, of the country where, where we were working and, and how this information can be very important for, for raise awareness about the number of persons with disability in general population. Afterwards, there is different other tools like uh, model of disability survey, but, but which is a uh, no, no, which is not um, uh, which is more important, which which take uh, around two and two hours and half, and, and this disability. This uh, disability survey gives more information, but but which it cannot be used as 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 a, as, as easy as as other uh, point because because it's, uh, it requires more more time and more financial resources. Finally, on, on the individual assessment level, we we, we are using different tools to, uh, related to international classification of uh, of functioning. Uh, some, some, most of time, it's. Uh, it's uh, who, who, who does uh, and, and the different uh, variation of, of this uh, of this tool. So uh, now I'm starting with this free example, how to give the example of the free country where we were working and how we use the different tools in order to, to render our social registry more disability inclusive. I'm starting with this Haiti because it's very interesting uh, uh, experience. The Haiti uh, made the uh, demographic and health su su survey use, using Washington group set of questions and they identified uh, around 25 percent of population having some uh, some uh, 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 different uh, form of disability it's very important because this tool connected to, to the to the to the uh, to the different poverty indicator can, can indicate that uh, person with severe uh, disability uh, 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 around uh, 86 percent of, of, of this person are uh, actually uh, uh, poor and uh, there is a different disability gap which uh, exists with, with the with regard of multidimensional po poverty because the, the person with disability more have more uh, uh, difficulty to, to, to get job and to to, to, to get some uh, some uh, de decent uh, decent uh, 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 revenue. Uh, uh, as, uh, when the World Bank was contacted for for, for the Haiti, Haiti, we was mainly 
uh, working on, 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 the, on the employment and the economic inclusion of persons with disability. And what, what we have found that uh, uh, only around around 60 percent of the person with disability are working, and uh, 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 among the 16 percent of person of disability working, or only uh, 15 percent are working as, as employee. Most of them are uh, uh, self-employed. So the the World Bank started the the, the project. Uh, promoting inclusive person with disability in, in, in social protection and employment program. And we started with the existing social registry, which was created in 2013. And uh, uh, inside of this social registry, using the Washington group set of questions, this short set of six questions, we, we, we started to identify the person with potential disability inside of the social registry. This project allowed it to, to identify around 53 person uh, uh, in, 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 and it was enrolled in, 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 in social registry. So just to, to, to show that uh, national statistic data started the process of how to better identify the person in the social registry. The, 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 the person with disability was already in social registry, but they, they was not identified at all. And so the, 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 this Washington, using the Washington group set of questions, allowed to better identify the person with disability, not all of them, but 53, it's a person with, with more severe, severe disability. Uh, Haiti didn't start yet work on, on the disability uh, registry, but the social registry can be used uh, as, a, as, a, as a good entry point for, for starting with identifying the, the person of, of disability. Next example, it's Egypt. We, we, we spoke to already during our webinar about, about the Tekahul and Karama program, so I will not stop a, lo a lot on, on this, but uh, just to, to say that Karama uh, uh, is uh, unconditional cash transfer, which is uh, targeting different vulnerable group of population, including person with disability, but um, uh, uh, person with disability represents uh, uh, 67 percent of the Karama beneficiaries. So uh, here uh, the, the traje trajectory was different. Actually, the, the the government of Egypt was was aware about the 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 the, the problems of a person with disability, and they started by developing the individual assessment tools. Uh, so which is uh, which is more complicated, but based on 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 ICF, which was connected to 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 the to to the to the to the cash transfer, and the the, the person with disability was. Uh, uh, assessed uh, uh, individually, uh, and, and afterwards, the, if if they if they they have the eligibility, they they, they have the top up uh, uh, for, for 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 existing uh, individual top top up for for for, for existing uh, cash transfer. So uh, next step uh, of the project, and the, the, this project will be supported as well by the World Bank, is to develop the uh, individual. Um, um, a specialized disability registry, which which we are working on. Uh, so the, the, we we started from the social registry. We will develop the uh, the the the, uh, the, in, in, the the separated disability registry we, 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 because as, as we said, social registry is based on the household, and the disability registry will be based on 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 the on the person. And we will uh, try to 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 organize the interoperability between these two two registry and second point that the, the national statistics of egypt was mainly when when we started the program of takaful and karama it was mainly based on on, on the census of 2006 which identified uh, by by self identification only two percent of the egyptian population which was a person with disability and while preparing this uh, this presentation i i found that in 2023 finally the central Agency of, of Statistics of Egypt used uh, uh, started to use not self identification during the census, but uh, the Washington Group says a set of question, and they identified around eleven percent of population uh, living with dis disability in national statistics. So here we we have a trajectory different from from Haiti because we we started mainly with social registry to identify the person with disability, and we we started to to, to develop this comprehensive system. Well, last uh, example, I would like to speak a bit about Mo Morocco. Morocco, as well, they they they, they conducted in 2014 the uh, enquete on, on on the person with disability based on the on the Washington Group's set of questions, and they identified uh, around uh, six and uh, five percent of uh, of a person with disability with, with severe disability inside of the population. 
Uh, World Bank is supporting now the uh, Morocco with the with the, with the project uh, uh, on social protection emergency uh, response uh, response project. Uh, and uh, one of the component of this project is to help to implement the uh, Ministry of Solidarity and Social Integration, the uh, disabil new disability evaluation system based on on the in international classification of functioning. So uh, the the the, uh, the ambition of the government of Morocco is try to 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 make uh, sure that the the disability registry will capture more person compared to, to to the national statistic. So in Morocco, the trajectory was a little bit different. They they started from from the national statistics and uh, and, and uh, find around to two to two point five million of person with severe disability. And they would like, and they compare it with existing registry because existing registry uh, 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 encompass only 180,000 persons with disability, including 50,000 ch children with disability. So they would like to, to so somehow to, to improve uh, through individual assessment tools the, the individual disability registry. And afterwards, they would like to organize the interoperability with the social registry because social registry is covering 60% of, of population, but they are using self-identification question for, for the person with disability. So our suggestion is as well to, to use uh, on the social registry already Washington group set of questions because it will, it will, um, it will help to better compare the data inside of the social registry with the national statistics, and uh, our colleagues from 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 uh, Mauritania will will speak more about about the, the, the similar experience. But the, but the tra trajectory of Morocco was to to to, to develop the separate uh, disability registry, which will be more in line with this, with social uh, statistics with national statistics, and afterwards organize interoperability with social registry. So in, to conclude, uh, I, we we. We were, we were always confused when we're using the different figures, even inside of the same country, we have different figures assessing the number of persons with disability. And uh, these figures can uh, usually they provide complementary uh, information. We, we don't need to, if, if we say that Washington Group set of question in national statistics uh, identify, let's say, five person of uh, person with severe disability, we will never find this five person of of population inside of the of the disability registry or, or in social registry but we, we we need to use it as as a as a as a as a, as a, as a, as a, as a information in order to to make more uh, in, more information about the person with disability second point is we we are trying to use inside of our uh, project the uh, washington group says a set of question as a entry point for, for the social registry in order to, to, to identify uh, uh, potential person with disability, as Alexander say, said, it's more like screening uh, procedure. It's not replacing the individual uh, uh, assessment, but it can be sometimes more, more uh, important because, because uh, the, the, the set of questions doesn't use the word disability. And uh, when the, the, the person are registering the data about the, the, the beneficiary in the social registry, they they cannot purport uh, 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 the uh, their own judgment. I will stop here and and I'm uh, ready to answer different questions. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Andre. Uh, uh, indeed, it is uh, interesting presentation uh, to hear and many and many uh, good uh, uh, and interesting point to take. Uh, I guess one of them is that we need to differentiate between disability data for statistic purposes and uh, certification, disability certification for social protection purposes. Uh, disability data for uh, disability data for statistic purposes could be uh, self-identification that might not be exact exactly uh, the purpose that we would like to get for the social protection because for the social protection we need to do self uh, we need to do uh, individual assessment. Uh, and uh, to understand uh, and to get exact data about the person if the person is in need for social protection support. And uh, these differences might lead to some also getting different numbers uh, about disability uh, rate in different countries, uh, in all countries, because uh, when you go for uh, disability data, uh, obviously you will get a higher number and when you go to the persons with disabilities who are exactly in need for support, 
uh, of the social protection, you will get lower numbers. So uh, we don't need to understand those uh, different numbers as a confusion process, rather as uh, those numbers uh, uh, exist for different purposes and we can use them accordingly. And also one of the good points we take that uh, despite uh, the social registry could be a good entry point uh, for uh, disability registration, we still need more efforts to have a disability registry. However, we need to need, we need to have interoperability between those, those system disability assessment uh, system and also the social registry. Since we are talking about this interoperability between the different system, let us hear from IT and uh, and uh, that uh, based expert, uh, Sheikh Rabani. Sheikh Rabani will tell us uh, more about the experience of Mauritania since he's working on the social registry there in Mauritania. Uh, Sheikh Rabani, could you kindly take the floor and you have uh, seven minutes to tell us about your experience there. Can you see the screen? Yes, I can yes, see it. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so the social registry monitoring and design program is one of the six program of the general delegation for national solidarity and the fight against ex uh, exclusion. Uh, exclusion. Uh, uh, named the Azor. This, uh, this uh, program is responsible uh, for the management and updating of the social registry of vulnerable households. Okay, What's, uh, what is the social registry? The social registry is a database of poor households. It serves to share data of the most vulnerable households with various Okay, with uh, various uh, actors and the uh, stakeholders in the field uh, in the field of social pro uh, protection, according uh, to criteria they uh, define based on their intervention objective. Uh, so the the process uh, to identify the poor household, uh, we have uh, many steps. The first Steps is uh, cut it, uh, calculating quotas uh, uh, by municipality or by city. Uh, next uh, step is uh, enumeration uh, by town. We conduct uh, a complete door-to-door uh, -door enumeration in each uh, locality to ensure uh, that the, the to ensure the participation of all uh, household. The next steps is application of uh, scoring uh, by city uh, on the municipality level. The next step is selecting the poor households by town. Uh, and uh, next we uh, uh, and uh, next we hold a general assembly in each locality uh, to validate the list of selected households. Uh, once the, the list of uh, the poor household is uh, selected, we conducted uh, a collection of additional data for these poor household. Uh, and last uh, step is uh, processing of complaints. Uh, after that, we, 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 we every uh, two year and a half, we, we, we do an, an update. We do an update of the, uh, of the poor household. So uh, based uh, on this experience, uh, since uh, 2015, uh, we have uh, 280,091 uh, poor household, uh, local uh, household. Uh, this experience was funded by, uh, by World, uh, World Bank. And based on this uh, experience, uh, we have conducted another uh, identification uh, for uh, refugees household. Uh, founded uh, in partnership with the uh, United Nations High Commissioner uh, for Refugees 
for refugees and World Food Bank. And we have conducted also a, a targeting of uh, a household which have one or uh, more uh, disabled members uh, in partnership with UNICEF. Uh, and uh, we have collected data of uh, 12,000 uh, households. And uh, the last categories we have, uh, we have the pastoral, the household. So now the social history of Mauritania uh, has uh, 319,183 uh, households. Uh, so uh, for each category of vulnerable households, uh, specific sections uh, are added to respond to the different uh, requests of social program intervening uh, for the benefit of that category, for example, uh, data on types and uh, degrees of disability uh, was uh, have been integrated into the questionnaire for household with one or more disabled members. Uh, so the following uh, charts uh, shows the percentage of type and degrees of disability. Uh, so we notice that uh, the type of motor disability is the most common, and uh, we notice that the, the degree of uh, severe disability uh, is the most important in uh, Mauritania. Payment and monitoring platform. Uh, the social history uh, have developed uh, over time an interesting uh, platform uh, to enable the distribution of cash and goods. Uh, it's easy to use. It utilizes uh, three payment methods, uh, either with ID card or phone number or a committee, a town committee, uh, and it allows uh, real-time monitoring of, assistant, of assistance operation. Uh, now the social history uh, has more than 25 users, uh, government uh, users uh, and uh, international organization users uh, and uh, so on. Thank you. Merci. Thank you so much, uh, Sheikh Rabani, uh, for sharing the practical uh, about the practicality about how to conduct uh, the data collection in regard to the registry and how the disability could be featured in such uh, process. Uh, let us have a long flight uh, from Britannia to Cambodia. Uh, to listen to the experience in evaluating the disability assessment process. And we will have our uh, colleague, uh, Sevenary uh, Ko, uh, uh, who is the social policy specialist uh, from uh, UNICEF. Sevenary, the floor is yours. Uh, uh, Thank you very much. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, just uh, Aladi, there was a bit gap. Uh, you remember I'm supposed to make a quick introduction before yeah, going sorry. to Cambodia. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, since we are going to listen to the different experiences about disability assessment uh, in low and middle income countries, we would like just to have a quick presentation here uh, to 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 also provide overall experience and uh, the different processes that are taking place in different countries. As a, as, a, as a starting process, and then we are going to uh, deep in specific countries. And Alex Scott, we are going to tell us about this overall uh, view about uh, what is going on in regard to the disability assessment, uh, identification and certification in lower and middle income countries. And sorry, Alex, for missing no that. No worries. Thank you very much. Um, so very quickly, um, we would like to share some of the lessons learned that we have we have seen uh, watching and supporting different countries going through the process of developing disability assessment and certification mechanism. The first one is a clarification of the objective of why are we doing that. And often there is a temptation, an idea that we will create a database of all persons with disabilities. Actually, what disability assessment and certification mechanism do is identifying children, working age adults, and possibly older persons, as well as their support needs, 
th those people who may require and want disability-related support to live independently in the community. And we identify the, those people and their needs in order to facilitate targeting, prioritization, and access to available mainstream and disability-specific programs through case management or eligibility determination. And those data are also useful for designing, planning, costing uh, required services to respond to unmet support needs. One of the things that is very important is the clarification of why the, the, the reform is done, if we change an existing system or if we create a system. Is it because we feel that not enough people have access to the support they need, or we don't get the right information on the support needed, or that we know that too many people face barrier in accessing the assessment and certification mechanism. Or maybe there is suspicion of fraud and that the system today is not um, doing enough to mitigate the risk of fraud. Or maybe we are just step creating the system as eligibility for a first disability benefit before nothing existing before. Another element is that disability identification and assessment exist in, in the different sectors for different purposes. For instance, in education, you will look at um, inclusive education needs assessment. What are the specific educational needs of a diversity of children with functioning difficulties? And usually you will get many more children that require education support in inclusive education than the number of children that would be uh, assessed and certified for social protection uh, specific disability support. In the healthcare system, you would do early identification with children of young age uh, that may have developmental delay. Um, it's, it's related to functioning difficulties, but not all the children that are assessed with developmental delays at two year old will end up as being considered uh, children with disabilities for the purpose of disability related social protection and so on and so forth. So it's very important that when we say disability assessment, it means many different things. So we always need to clarify why are we doing disability assessment and certification. As I mentioned, not all person experiencing disability will want and obtain a disability certificate. If we take the whole population of people experiencing disability, there is a subset of this population who need assistive technology. There is another subset of this population who self-identify as person with disabilities. For instance, many older person have functioning difficulties, are de facto experiencing disability, but will not self-identify as person with disabilities. So if you have a disability card system, for instance, they may not apply because they don't consider themselves as person with disabilities. So it's very important that we accept the idea that even if we have a good coverage of disability certification mechanism, we are not capturing the whole population experiencing disability. Another element is that to be able to be in the system, you need to be informed about the disability card and the possible benefit. You need to decide based on the benefits if it's worth to apply and go through the process. Then you need to manage to go through the process in terms of accessing it, the information, affordability, having the necessary documentation required. And finally, you need to meet the criteria that are uh, established for obtaining the disability status or the disability card. Another thing that we've seen in, in many countries is that there was not necessarily enough work done on what are the benefits that should be conditioned by the disability status? For instance, access to assistive technology. Should it be only for people who have disability card? What about older person who need assistive technology but would not apply for a disability assessment and certification, for instance? So having a clarity on what kind of benefit would be conditioned by the disability status is very important. Another element is ensuring that all the ministries and authorities that are supposed to grant benefits based on the disability status or the disability card are involved in the development of the disability certification mechanism because they need to trust the system. If they don't trust the system, there will be difficulties afterwards in terms of uh, granting the benefit. And associated to that, it's important as you develop or reform your system to do some costing of the different benefit package 
and trying to see how it will be resourced and what would be the delivery and financing arrangement of those different benefits. Because the last thing you want is people having a disability status or a disability card with no benefits that they can access. Another issue that we've seen is the importance to dissociate conceptually the disability assessment, which is the information that you collect about a person uh, disability related situation and the certification, which is the official decision that you do based on the assessment and official criteria. And it's very important to have a good conversation across stakeholders on those criteria. So I just project on the screen the case of Nepal, which use a classification based on the level of support required. I won't go into detail, but it's very important to have this clarity because it influences how assessment is defined and done. About what we are looking to assess, it's important to remember CRPD committee recommendations, looking at not only impairment and functional difficulties, but also the basic need for support, the barrier that people face at home and in the community, the support they have and the level of participation and restriction of participation they uh, have. And this assessment, collecting all this information, will feed case management, policy planning, disability certification, and eligibility determination. One thing we have seen also is the connection increasingly between the work on disability registry and other management information system, as Andre uh, mentioned about the social registry, but also how case management can be supported by education and health management information system. And finally, one thing that is extremely important is how do we ensure that the system is primarily accessible? We have seen many countries focusing on, we need to shift to the social model of disability, we need to be compatible with the international classification of function, which is very important. But if the mechanism you, you create is complex, multidisciplinary teams, et cetera, but you do not have the staff at the local level to do it, then you will exclude a lot of people because those people will have to travel to big cities where those teams are to be able to, uh, to do the assessment. And the primary uh, requirement for a system that is supposed to be the gatekeeper to provide support is that people have easy access to the mechanism of disability certification. So the challenge that countries are facing is how to build a system that is easily accessible, that provides as much information as possible on the not only the impairment, but the support needs of the people and the barrier they experience, that is also age appropriate because we don't assess disability the same way for children and adults. And while you do that, it has to be reliable, mitigating the risk of fraud, being accountable and transparent so that different ministries and organization of persons with disability and the broader public believe in the system. Uh, and we've seen a lot of different ways of doing that depending on the context. And this is what we will hear from our colleagues from Cambodia and Armenia, over. Uh, thank you so much, Alex, for bringing this complexity. Uh, as you mentioned, there is a lot of complexity in regard to the process of disability assessment, identification, determination, and certification. As we need to have a system that, uh, as we need to have a system that is comprehensive, reliable, trustable, based on the human rights-based approach, accessible, ex uh, extra, extra. And on the same time, we need to ensure that uh, this uh, the outcome of this system is well linked with the benefit package, and that there is no like uh, uh, exclusion or inclusion uh, or inclusion errors. And uh, why I'm thanking you for bringing this complexity uh, because I would like all of us to think about how we can go in this process uh, in low and middle income countries, and we know that. There are many competing agenda in those countries, and there is limited resources in terms of technical, human, and financial resources. Uh, let us see how that is done in Cambodia. And in, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there is assessment, uh, and there is evaluation about it. So, uh, severely after the technical landing, we are getting back to your airport again in Cambodia. Could you take us from there?
Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity to share the finding from uh, country-led uh, process evaluation of the social and rights-based disability identification in Cambodia. Please allow me to start with the overview of the disability identification mechanism process. And then my colleagues, Eric, Suruyami will uh, research of the country like process evaluation. The social and rights-based disability identification in Cambodia aim to have the common national standard disability identification data that using the technology-based management information system as the basis to promote, protect the social uh, the process the services and development of the people with disability in Cambodia. In short, there are four steps in the disability identification process, which is start with the step one, prepare. I think we have lost you, if you can hear us. Can you hear us, please? No, I guess I guess we lost her. So maybe we can proceed and get back to Cambodia. So let us go back to Armenia. And we have uh, Maya Simonen. And uh, uh, apologies, yeah. Al there is a colleague of uh, um, uh, Savorani, Erika, is here as a backup, so she can continue the presentation for Cambodia. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Erica? Please go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Alex. Um, so I'm going to take over from here. My name is Erica, uh, Evaluation Officer at UNICEF uh, Cambodia. So as Savanari uh, mentioned, we recently conducted a process evaluation of the, the uh, disability identification mechanism in the country. Um, so she was explaining how it's done in Cambodia. So basically, there are four steps at the commune level. Uh, the commune Sankat is the, the lowest uh, administra administrative uh, area. So they uh, they have a uh, disability focal point. They identify uh, persons with disabilities in their communities and uh, they conduct uh, data collection interviews with, uh, with them. And then uh, those information uh, will, will be sent to a provincial level. They will review and verify the information. And then it goes to the central level for uh, issuance of the disability identification uh, uh, ID cards. So that's the, the very simple version of a uh, process uh, in Cambodia. Uh, as for the evaluation, um, before uh, diving into the details, please note that uh, this is still a preliminary findings and we are in the process of finalization. The objectives of the evaluation uh, is to analyze the design and uh, implementation process. So it focuses on the process itself. Like it's, it is not to evaluate the impact of the mechanism on people's, uh, people uh, with disabilities. And then it is also to assess effectiveness and efficiency of the mechanism and to identify barriers. And it is heavily qualitative. So we used purposive sampling. We selected five provinces in the country. And within five provinces, we identified 13 communes based on the strategic priorities of the government of Cambodia, as well as uh, UNICEF. We conducted online qualitative survey in all 25 provinces. Um, it, it, this is for uh, provincial uh, officials uh, to get some information uh, from them. And we also had KIIs with government officials, uh, UN partners, and the development partners, along with FG, uh, FGD's uh, focus group discussions with uh, OPDs and persons uh, with disabilities and community. We used relevance, effectiveness, coherence, efficiency, sustainability, and equity, gender equality, and human rights as a uh, uh, evaluation criteria. And in terms of uh, time scope, um, the evaluation covers from 2000 until uh, until 
uh, uh, today. Um, so 2000 is uh, is the year that uh, the Minister of Social Affairs, uh, which is the leading ministry from the government side, adapted the the uh, uh, the policy of this uh, disability identification mechanism. So let's dive into the findings. In terms of relevance, um, the evaluation found that the disability identification mechanism is uh, well aligned with the national development goals, including social protection priorities and policies. And it is designed to contribute to the national disability strategic plan and then also the national social protection policy framework. In terms of alignment with uh, uh, the international standards, it is, uh, uh, of course, linked to CRPD, the Convention on the Rights of the Persons with Disability Guidelines and the Standards. It also contributes to SDG principles of inclusivity. And it uses a participatory approach and it, the, the engagement with uh, government partners, development partners, and then also uh, persons with disabilities themselves. Um, so this uh, participatory approach fostered a sense of ownership and empowered stakeholders. However, the evaluation also found that the OPD, the Organization uh, for the Persons with Disabilities Involvement, could be enhanced to further align their needs, uh, their needs uh, to uh, to the, the the mechanism. In terms of uh, in terms of he sorry um in terms of effectiveness um so the focal points uh, at the commune level showed a very strict compliance with the guidelines and established procedures uh, were able to promptly address the complaints related to the mechanism the identification mechanism there are some trainings uh, provided for focal points at the commune level However, the evaluation also found that a trainings for focal points could be further tailored to the specific needs uh, of each community. And uh, the majority of persons with disabilities, I uh, indicated that the interviews, uh, when, when they do interviews to register themselves in the system, they said the interview process uh, uh, was mostly smooth, except questions related to uh, disability types. So some of the persons with disabilities found a little bit of difficult to answer some of the questions in, in, during the interviews. There are also some issues with providing ID document when they uh, registered themselves in a system. For instance, uh, birth, they didn't have birth certificate or national ident uh, um, identification uh, document. And in terms of numbers, um, so in the system at the, as of, uh, I believe as of it was uh, June, uh, more than 300,000 persons with disabilities have been registered in the system, which is around 50% of the total population of persons with disabilities, according to the latest census. And more than 200,000 persons with disabilities have received disability ID cards, and then 50,000 cards are on the way. However, benefits and use of this disability ID cards are still unclear, and this needs to be further improved. In terms of coherence, there are regular meetings at the central level that includes other line ministries other than the Ministry of Social Affairs. And the Ministry of Social Affairs uh, have strong partnerships uh, with other stakeholders, including UN agencies and development partners. And this strong, strong coordination mechanism facilitated the exchange of knowledge and experiences that enabled uh, them to implement uh, some innovative approaches and strategies. And there are some synergies and interlinkages uh, uh, between, uh, between the uh, disability identification process and other social protection programs. However, those linkages could be further improved. And uh, interoperability uh, with other government systems and database could be also enhanced. In terms of 
efficiency, there is some delay in issuing disability ID cards and financial resources are found to be insufficient. However, active engagement, as mentioned earlier, with uh, government stakeholders at all levels, central level, provincial level, communal level, and also with OPDs and then persons with disability themselves increase the sense of ownership, hence, in, hence the, the increase in sustainability. However, the financial resource, the sufficient financial resource would be the key for a long-term sustainability. And there are also some special efforts made by village chief, a commune chiefs, and disability focal points at the community level to ensure all persons with disabilities, including uh, those who live uh, in remote areas and women and girls with disabilities were, uh, were not excluded. And uh, some of the key challenges uh, noted by uh, persons with disabilities and then also the disability focal points um, is uh, the limited skills and the knowledge on disability inclusion and then on dis different types of disabilities. And then also the human, human resources and then financial resources are also limited and the lack of community awareness and communication channels on disability identification process can be a little bit more clear. In terms of lessons learned, um, so evaluation identifies lessons learned most, mostly around uh, collaborations, coordination, engagement of stakeholders. For example, like active engagement of uh, organization of uh, persons with disabilities and then the community members, including uh, commu uh, commune chiefs, significantly contributes to the success of the uh, of the disability identification mechanism in 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 the country, and then also the strong partnerships uh, among government uh, government entities uh, like ministries and uh, the government officials at all levels. Uh, was also instrumental in, in the process. Um, and also the close collaboration between subnational authorities and the governor's office at the subnational level uh, was very uh, found to be very effective uh, for a multi-sectoral approach to ensure the holistic assistance for persons with disabilities. The evaluation also identifies uh, several recommendations to put forward. Uh, one is around capacity building uh, for OPDs to empower, uh, empower persons with disabilities. And another is to build the capacity among disability focal points uh, at the community level, especially. And again, uh, integration, integration of data, database systems to enhance uh, interoperability operability and monitoring and field support are also needed uh, in order to um, address uh, immediate issues and challenges at the commune level in a timely manner. And then the communication and coordination uh, to increase the awareness among communities, uh, especially when it comes to uh, benefits and the use of the dis uh, disability identification uh, ID cards, so that more uh, persons with disability are willing to register themselves. It was uh, very quick, but that's all from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sharika, for stepping in and for the comprehensive uh, presentation. And indeed, it is a nice experience to read around. And I'm sure uh, many people here would like to read uh, the, the outcome document of this evaluation. If it is already out, uh, I think it would be interesting if you can share it in the chat. Uh, I like the comprehensive uh, collaboration and co uh, coordination between the government uh, at uh, horizontal and um, vertical level, and also the collaboration with UN agencies, and in particular with organizations of persons with disabilities. Uh, thank you so much once again, and let us see how uh, the disability assessment and e-registration system is working in Armenia, and we have uh, Maya and uh, Armoni. Uh, please take the floor, and if you can be a little bit uh, brief, that would be fantastic, as we are 
we are we are going to have some uh, space in the end for answering some questions. The floor is yours. Thank you. Could you please confirm if you can see my screen? I can say yes. Okay, thank you. So in the meeting are two of us from Armenia uh, working group. Uh, I will start the presentation due to the lack of time and both of us are here and will stand by to respond to any question that you have. So the disability reform in Armenia The disability reform in Armenia actually start with the ratification of the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability back in 2010. Then uh, in 2015, we start working on development of the assessment protocols for disability assessment. And actually it took us about five years to come up with the final disability assessment protocols. At the beginning, we have only one general assessment protocol, one for children and another one for adults. While now we have 21 focused protocols, but they, those are age and uh, gender specific protocols. Uh, uh, it should be also mentioned that for the disability determination, seven different approach has been uh, piloted and tested. Um, and uh, finally, uh, in 2021, we approved two very important laws, law on rights of persons with disability and law on functional assessment, after which we start implementation and nationwide introduction of the new disability assessment process. Uh, in parallel, we also worked on the development of e-disability digital system. Uh, it was always uh, like in our mind to remember that disability assessment is not a standalone process and the disability assessment is just the beginning of the reform in order to ensure availability of diverse services for persons with disability. Now on your screen, you can see the difference of the business processes of the previous model that we have and the current functional assessment. What we have within this new system? First of all, we have online application possibility. Uh, next, which is uh, uh, one of the important things to be mentioned that all the referral documents as well as the medical data is coming directly from the e-health. So there is no need for the applicant to come with the uh, documents. Assessment is conducted through the Unified Social Service Centers, which are available throughout the country. We have 49 of them. And the assessment can be done both in the center or at home, depending on the condition of the applicant. Uh, then the selection of the assessment committee is conducted randomly from the pool of experts that we have in the system. And the assessment is conducted by the multidisciplinary team. So within the team, we have doctors and non-doctors therapists. While in the previous system, the assessment of disability was conducted only by doctors. The assessment itself is based on the WHO International Classification of Functioning Disability and Health. And at the end of the assessment, the applicant received a decision about the disability determination as well as receiving individual service program for himself and the list of the guaranteed services that is state, uh, state funding. Of course, uh, the other comp component of the, this whole system is the monitoring and of provision and quality of the services provided. Now on your screen, you can see one of the centers that is equipped with both medical and not medical equipment. On the second photo, you can see how the committee is sitting and observing mm, the applicant, the functions of the applicant. And the third one, it's very short shot, showing how the... Uh, assessors are observing if the child can follow instruction and climbing the stairs. Simultaneously, you will see that the mother of child is also in the room and the other assessors are interviewing mother. So this is just one of the example. Now, what we have with this new system, first of all, current now we have 
visibility in numbers, which means that we can see the severity status of applic uh, those that are in the system. And we also see the disability categories. We have comprehensive need assessment. So we have doctors and non-doctors conducting the assessment and all assessment are based on the assessment tools and guides, which uh, prove uh, the reliability of the assessment. Environmental factors are also considered for developing individual services and support. And the committee of assessors are randomly selected by minimizing the possibility of fraud. And also what we have with this new assessment system that we have the data for developing individual service plan, but it also gives an information to the government to plan the budget for the services. Simultaneously, in parallel with the development of the disability assessment, that there are other components that are going in parallel. First of all is expansion of the national list of assistive technology. And currently, not all assistive technology are linked with the disability status. So children can receive AT if they need, regardless of the disability status. We are also trying to introduce new mechanism of provision of AT such as AT lending or AT library concept. Uh, you can also see that the funding for the AT was increased during the last years. The other thing is diversification of the services. So introduction of the new types of the services such as personal assistant or expansion of the services that are available in the country. And currently what we are working on is on uh, the uh, costing the packages of the services based on the disability in order to develop the vouchers for provision of the services. As it was mentioned, the e-disability digital system was developed in parallel. Now you can see on your screen the homepage of the e-disability. Uh, it's um, accessible. As you can see, there is an audio guide for those who has visual difficulties. And for now, e-disability has several components in it starting from application process and then combining the data as it uh, linked to the other databases as e-health, population registry, state revenue committee, and so on. Then it developed a case, we call it VNet, then randomly selected a committee of assessors. And after the assessment, the citizen applicant received a decision. Decision can be received also online. So we also consider that uh, this platform will be enriched, adding here the provision of the assistive technology and provision of the services in order to track uh, quality of provided services. It also has audio visual guide. I will try to turn on so you can see that those who are first comers, they can see how to apply and what the process overall. Explanation is in Armenian, of course, but there is an English translate below. So from the e-health coming directly to this system. Then the system is developing a case and deciding which types of the protocol should be used. Vinet developer is also mentioning who should be involved in the team of assessors, depending on the case and the types of the disability. The assessment 
consequences. And as it was mentioned, assessment committee is selected randomly from the pool of experts that we have. And they receive the information about the case just three days before the date of the assessment. Assessment are done and then the evaluation is conducted automatically by the system in order to decrease the human error possibility. So that's much from uh, our side. Just to mention that the whole process throughout these 10 years, it was very participatory. So persons with disability and parents of children with disability was actively participate at all stages, starting from the beginning. And one important thing lessons learned from us that throughout the process was very much put in the, our focus, capacity building of the local specialist as well as public awareness raising. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, indeed, it is quite comprehensive and interesting to see this experience. And I'm sure also many colleagues here uh, would like it and would like to learn more about it. And in particular that you have a comprehensive approach that is not relying uh, like totally on medical approach, rather integrating as a discipline uh, in this process. Uh, since we have some uh, some minutes left that we are already occupied for question and answer, I would request my colleague Alex Scott if you can help me if there is any question in the Q and A so we can address them uh, in the remaining time. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, Al Hadi. Uh, many many questions uh, in the in the chat uh, in the Q and A. Um, many of them uh, around the instruments, some question around, uh, can we get more specific categorization or classification in addition to the international classification of functioning and um, or, or question on instruments? And I think related to that, what's important, and I think the, the different presentation from Andrei, uh, Cher, uh, Erika and, and Maya shows that it all depends on the context. The, each country needs to solve this equation, which is we need a system that provides us the best information possible on persons with disability and the support they require so that we can design programs and, and have eligibility determination that is the most uh, inclusive and fair possible. And we can anticipate and plan for uh, supporting and met needs. In the other hand, we need systems that are, that are very accessible, because if they are not accessible, then there is no point in making the system in the first place. And this is why there is no one size fits all tools, instruments, or process. When you see what Erika and Maya was describing, the function is the same. The logic behind it is the same. The way of doing it is very different. Why? Because Cambodia is very different from Armenia. One thing also is Cambodia is building a system for the first time, while Cambodia is reforming an existing system, which had issues, for instance, in terms of fraud. And we see that in the work with different countries, how the trust, both of government, but also of organization of person with disability in the system and in frontline workers influence enormously the way things are done. So very often we think, oh, it's the tool. Is it the Washington group or this one? Is it when actually there are a lot of questions related to capacity of staff at local level, level of trust in frontline workers, transparency uh, between government and OPDs. All those issues have as much impact on the, 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 the definition and the implementation of the mechanism than purely technical, uh, technical answers. Um, so that was one source of, of uh, question that we had. Um, we have a specific question for Maya. Do we have established criteria based on which the social service center start disability assessment for certification? Maya? Uh, yes, 
thank you for the question. Yes, actually we have uh, established criteria uh, for, for those who are coming to the system for the assessment. And we also have a criteria for determining the disability, which is a sensitive. And also the threshold was developed based on the multiple piloting conducted in the country in order to ensure that this threshold of disability determination is sensitive to the disability type. Okay, thank you, Maya. Um, other question that we, um, that we get was related to um, different type of benefit that exists in the country, like Mauritania. I would suggest that we do not address those questions because we will focus mostly on the, on the disability assessment and identification. Uh, there was also a question about the sustainability of social protection cash transfer in, um, in the system. Uh, but we had, for instance, a question which I would like to come back to Erika, maybe, and Sovanari about the doctor. Many countries uh, put the medical doctor uh, as the entry point. You need to get a certificate from the medical doctors. And we have seen that in actually in many low and middle income countries, there is no doctors available at local level. So some countries like Vietnam, Fiji, uh, but also Cambodia have decided to take another approach. Could you elaborate a little bit on some, some of the discussion that may have taken place or some of the issues you faced by having a, a disability assessment that doesn't start by a medical doctor assessment? I don't know, Sovanari or Erika who wants to go. Thank you very much, uh, Alec. Actually, in Cambodia, it started with the the first launch of the of the disability allowance cash transfer program, and that for the people with disability. But uh, there is no system in terms of identification of the target group. Then it was uh, it was issue in twenty sixteen for the program to roll out. It took for almost five years in order to manage the approval for the social and right-based disability identification for the implementation of the program, which was already uh, approved for the for the past five years already. So this is the reason why the why the Ministry of Social Affairs decided to move from the medical uh, medical identity medical uh, doctor certificate to the social and rights-based disability identification for the people with disability to access the social protection uh, cash transfer program. Yeah. And Thank you. Then it, it uh, led on is approved by the government as a national system for the disability identification for the use of uh, disability inclusive social services and other social assistance program as well. Thank you. Thank you, Savanari. One of the things that we've seen, uh, for instance, also in Fiji or Vietnam, is the fact that while the doctor assessment and the doctor is not the entry point to ensure that there is access at local level, doctors can intervene as verification. So they are not the first point of entry, but if the local team, for instance, has difficulty to make the assessment, or if there is a doubt, for instance, eh, we don't know if this person really has the impairment they say they have, they could be a referral to, for instance, the district level where there is a medical doctor that can do the assessment. In Fiji, for instance, this is, and, and in Vietnam, this is supported. For instance, you would, it will be the cost of going to do this assessment with the doctor will be covered by the system. But in Vietnam, for instance, if the doctor find out that you don't have the impairment you said you have, or the difficulty, then you will have to reimburse. But uh, Rwanda also has moved to a system when doctors are not the entry point. And we believe that for many, many countries where medical doctors are not readily available at local level, those new approaches, which are often supported by app-based digitized system, so I think it's important to, to specify, are really providing an answer um, to, to the issue. And another issue we've seen is also medical doctors are very busy in countries with limited 
human resources. So using them to do those basic assessments is a very huge opportunity cost for the healthcare system. Uses them as verification is more efficient. Um, let me see if we have other questions. Maybe I could address those. Um, and maybe we can come back to uh, Erika, Maya, Andre, or Cher. It's all about the, the, the criteria. So we talked a lot about the assessment, huh? but how do you decide, what was the process to decide the criteria, whether a person will be decided as having a disability or not? Is it the severity of the impairment? Is it the level of support that the person required to do activity of daily living, different countries are using different criteria. Um, so maybe a, a, a quick point, what are the, the, the criteria that you've used in uh, maybe Cambodia or Armenia, for instance? Just if we can do that 30 minutes, 30 seconds for each, as we only have like yeah. two minutes. Who wants to start? Maya, maybe, or Savanari? Yes. yes, thank you very much. In Cambodia, we, uh, in terms of the criteria, it's both in the, the social criteria and also the functional criteria, including the uh, ability to to perform in terms of their daily life, their okay. daily uh, routine uh, activity, as well as the, their uh, impairment and also in terms of the uh, ele ele uh, intellectual uh, disability, the criteria is the, really based on the some, um, some uh, set questionnaire that uh, looking into uh, that kind of intellectual uh, impairment. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Maya? It's a, com a combination of some question from the Washington group as well. Yeah, thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, Maya? Thank, thank, yeah, thank you for the question. First of all, just to mention when the applicant is applying for the disability assessment, applicant is also filled on the self-assessment uh, form or questionnaire where he mentioned the uh, level of support that they need from their point of view. As of criteria, we have both. Uh, we are uh, considering activity participation as well as environmental factors. Environmental factors are considered for, for development of individual service plan for support and while the activity and participation as well as functions are considered for the disability determination. Okay, Over. thank you. Uh, and maybe, before we close, uh, a last comment or from Andre or Cher, if you want to share any reflection uh, in few seconds uh, with regards to the different questions that have been asked. Andre? Yes, uh, thank you very much for, for the very, very, very uh, full, full, full question. So we try to, to answer them by, 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 by the question and answer. But one of the questions which come from Ketevan, uh, about the how to use this Washington group set of questions uh, as, as a screening uh, for the social registry. I would like to highlight that we, we, of course, this is not the ideal tool, but but in the country where you don't have any assessment mechanism or the assessment is mainly based only on medical uh, 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 medical criteria, Washington group set of questions can can be used uh, as as an entry point for 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 for, for, the, for the social registry, but Washington Group says the question doesn't uh, uh, doesn't uh, replace the the assessment. Of course, most of the experience we heard to today that they they use the functional uh, assessment mechanism used by international classification of function, but functioning. But uh, what we should take into in, in into into account is in in the in the lot of country where there's no any assessment mechanism at all. In, if we are working in, in Africa or, or in, in, the, the example we gave is it, in, in Haiti. So um, uh, we're using it as a, as a starting point, not, not, not as an ideal mechanism, but a starting point to raise the awareness that the, we, we need to, to, to provide some more uh, comprehensive assessment for, for the person with disability. Over. Thank you very much. Uh, Cher, any concluding elements? Uh, no, thank you. It's okay. Okay. Al-Radi.
Uh, thanks, thanks, Alex, for facilitating this Q&A part of the session, and thank you everyone for being with us today. As a reminder, uh, this uh, uh, webinar is a part of the series webinar that uh, you can you can see in the web page of the socialprotection.org and the series of webinars. And the and the series of webinars are focusing on uh, how to make the disability inclusive social protection system, and uh, they are coming as a part of the launching process for the joint guidance on this towards disability inclusive social protection, enabling inclusion and participation of persons with disabilities. Indeed, it will be interesting uh, to invite you to read the guidance itself and to use it, uh, and indeed you will find uh, many nice. Uh, uh, technical stuff about disability assessments there in the guidance. And uh, we will also interested to invite you to the upcoming webinar in this series, which will take place in two weeks, in particular on 25th uh, July. So stay tuned and be with us towards disability inclusive social protection. Thank you so much uh, for all of you for attending and participating and contributing to the discussion through the chat box and Q&A. And thank you for uh, socialprotection.org for organizing this and for all our uh, distinguished speakers for making yourself available to make such uh, intervention uh, today. All the best and see you in 25th July in the webinar about disability inclusive cash transfer. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, colleagues.